In today's video, we're going to be digging back into ACPT, specifically looking at the repeater region. Now, if you don't know what a repeater region is, it's basically a collection of meta fields grouped together that could be used once or more with any kind of post type. In our example, we're going to be dealing with events. So to demonstrate this, this is what I created in the last video. This is our custom event. So we've used a mixture of normal post type information, the post title and so on, and we've got some custom fields inside here. But if we scroll down, you can see we've got these mini experiences. These are associated with that specific event. So these are little kind of mini demonstrations, we'll say. So inside there, we've got a name, date, time, price, and the ability to book the event. This is just a, a, a URL that will take you over to whatever booking platform you want. Not important, it's a demonstration. And obviously we've got the background image, but we don't know how many times we may need to add these in. It could be once, it could be five times, it could be a hundred times. We need flexibility, and that's where the ability to use repeater regions comes in super handy. So now we've seen what we're going to create, Let's jump into WordPress, into ACPT, and take a look at how we create it. So we're back into the previous example. As you can see, I've got events, and if I open this up quickly, you'll see there's the different events we've got. If we open up the Food Festival one, which you just looked at, you'll see inside here we've got our normal post title, our post content, we've got our featured image, we've got our event type, which is a custom taxonomy, and underneath we've got a couple of custom fields created with ACPT. Please do watch the previous video if you're new to ACPT because it'll show you how I've done all of this. So that's what we have so far. So let's come back out of this and go back into ACPT. So we're going to come into our field groups. And inside here, we've got event details. Now, this is associated with our custom post type of events. So let's open this up and edit it. What we currently have is one set of meta boxes, which are our event details. If we expand this, you'll see inside here, we've got a couple of meta fields. We've got a date field for the event date. We've got an event address, which is text. And finally, we've got an event gallery, which is, funnily enough, a gallery. So that's what we have so far. So let's minimize this. And what we're going to do is instead of adding our repeater region inside there, we're going to add a new meta box because this will still be associated with our custom post type, but it allows us to kind of organize things a little bit neater. So first things first, we've got to give this a name. So let's edit this. We're just going to call it mini events. It doesn't really matter too much. Just make sure it's unique and relevant to what you're creating. Okay, so there's the first thing. So that's kind of creating the grouping. So let's add in our field. So let's add a field in. And inside here, we're going to set the, first of all, give it a name. We'll call it mini events repeater, so we can immediately see where it is. And change our field type over. And what we're looking for, if we scroll on down through, you'll see we've got repeater inside here. Let's choose that from the list. And now you'll see we get a different set of options underneath. We get this children option. And this is where we create the subfields. So things like the mini event name, the price, the date, the time, the URL to go book the ticket, all the things we saw when I showed you right back at the beginning with our demonstration design. So what we can do inside here is just do that, add our fields in. So we'll add a field in, and this now kind of nests those fields inside the repeater. So they're all the normal options you've got, all the different field types are available inside your editors, numbers, range, and so on. So we can build this up in whatever way we want, as simple or as complex as we need it to be. So the first thing we want to do is we want to give the mini event a name. So let's do that. We're going to call this mini event name. So what I would always recommend when you're working with any kind of meta fields, whatever tool you're using, name things accordingly. So in other words, this is a mini event. We've got that listed at the top here. So mini events. We know this is a mini event and the data associated with all these meta fields are associated with the mini event. Let's make our life easier when it comes to finding the data we want by naming things accordingly. So mini event name, we're going to put mini event at the beginning of everything. So text is fine. We don't need to worry about things like advanced options and so on, but you can obviously customize these should you need to. We don't need them in this instance. We just literally want the meta field names. So there's the first one. Let's just minimize this. Let's add another one in. Let's add another field in. So again, like we said, mini event, change this over to a date option. And there we go. We can choose the format if we want to, but day, month, year is perfectly fine in the UK. If you're in the US, you're probably going to want to flip that slightly or anywhere else in the world. Choose what you need. Again, we can set up any other options, but for now, we're going to leave them as they are. Minimize this, add another field in, mini event time. We're going to set this one, funnily enough, to a time option. Minimize it, add another field in. So this is our mini event price. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to be a number. 
Again, if you want to set the default value for the field, you can do things like that inside here. And the final one we want to do is the URL that's going to be used for the button to purchase the ticket for the event. So like we've done before, and we'll change the type inside here, and we want URL from the list. And then underneath, you can see we've got URL and label. So I don't need the label in this example. So what we can do is we can come over in the advanced options. And from here, we can come down and customize things. So what kind of URL structure do you want? Do you want absolute or relative? This is going off to an external site in this example. So the absolute is fine. But relative is if you wanted the links to be associated with internal pages in your site. It basically just strips out the domain name and just puts the basic simple relative path in there. So we'll leave that set to absolute. We're going to say, yes, we want to hide the label and we want to render this as a URL. We'll minimize this and there we go. There's all of the fields for our repeater. So all we need to do now is save this and we are done. Now, before we move on, it's worth bearing in mind that if you want to use repeater regions, you don't have to associate them with a custom post type. You can associate repeater regions with normal WordPress posts in exactly the same way you can add any other meta field. So don't feel like you have to create a custom post type to be able to use repeater fields or any of the other meta fields available inside a tool like ACPT. OK, so now let's jump over to one of our events and take a look. Let's open up the Food Festival one again. And you can see all the same info is here. And if we scroll down, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see a bit better what's going on. You see there's our normal data, so our event date and so on. If we scroll underneath, there's our mini events repeater. Now, currently, we have nothing set up here. But let's take a look at adding one in. So we say add mini event repeater. And now that will open up the repeater for us. So you can see all the data is inside you, but we have missed one thing out, which we're going to go back and correct in a moment. We haven't actually added in the featured image for this. So we can easily come back in and make changes to anything we create. So let's jump back at this and back into ACPT. And we're back into our repeater region. Let's add a field in like we've done before. So now what we need to do is select what kind of field this is. So we're going to scroll on through until we find the option for image, choose that from the list, and that opens up the ability to upload images. So now if we come down, you can see you've got some options here to upload a kind of placeholder image. You can jump into advanced options if you want to, set this up to be a post thumbnail if you want to override the default setup. You can choose then how do you want to render it as HTML, URL, or ID. In this example, URL is selected, and that's what we're going to use. But you can see there are some other options here should you want to use them. So with that in place, we've basically got everything we need. So all we need to do is save this and we can now carry on and back into our food festival. So now if we come underneath, say mini event repeater, let's add a new one in. You see now we've got all the options inside here. So let's give it a name. We'll give it a date. We'll click. You can see we got a nice little pop up so we can choose what date it is. We'll say this is on Friday. The time you can see we can choose the time from here as well. So we can easily say what we want. This is going to be 2 p.m., for example. Hit apply. Event price, we say 9.99. And we're going to say the event URL. So this is going to be the link for our button. And there we go. And now we'll add an image. So we'll choose to upload, choose an image, and say OK. So there is our first one. So now we know we've got one event added or one mini event added. But now we want to add another one in. So what we need to do is click add another event in. And there we go. We can add a second event in. And there we go. I've created a second event. All I need to do is save this. If I want to delete it, I can click the delete. I can minimize this. And you can easily drag these around into different orders should you want to. You can delete all your events from here. And you've got some keyboard shortcuts to make life a little quicker and easier. So we'll hit save. And we've now created a couple of repeater region entries for our different little mini events. So now we're going to need to go and actually output this. Now I'm using Bricks Builder like I did in the first video. So let me demonstrate how we expand our template that we created in the previous video and include repeater regions inside you from ACPT. Now, if you're getting value from this video, why not go and hit that thumbs up button to tell YouTube you're enjoying it? And while you're down there, why not hit the subscribe button? But if you're not getting value or enjoying it, well, you can hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well too. So I'm into the template section. In Bricks, the single event template is what I need to edit. So we're going to choose to edit this with Bricks. So this is our template we created in the previous video, and I've added a new section in for our featured events, our little mini events. This is just basically a placeholder. There's nothing special here. If I expand this out, you'll see I created a card. Inside there, I've got an image. I've got a container that's going to contain our basic info for date, time, 
the name of the event, the background image, and all those kinds of good things. So what we need to do is set up, first of all, the loop that's going to display the content here for us. And that's where we actually tell it to use the repeater region as opposed to just normal posts and so on. Let me show you how to do that first, then we'll start mapping the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose our card, and from there we're going to go to our query loop, open our query loop up, and normally you've got your posts and your pages and so on inside you. But if we open this up, you'll see we now have this events, mini events repeater. Because we've added a repeater region in, now Bricks picks this up inside the query loop to be able to use that repeater region data. So if we select that from our list, we don't need to worry about templates or text, although if you wanted to create a template, you could do. But that's all we need to do. We've now set this up to be able to take the data for it, this particular repeater region. So now what we need to do is just start mapping the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over into the image to start off with. We're going to come over and we're going to choose our dynamic data. And from there, we're going to scroll down to ACPT. And inside here, you can see there's all of our data that's created inside ACPT. You'll see now why I suggest always making sure that you give the names relevance. So mini events, for example, you can see mini events, event details. We can easily see what the data actually applies to. So we're looking for that image that we've used and uploaded with each of our repeater regions. So we look down at the bottom, you can see there's our image, mini event image. We'll select it from the list and that will add it in now. One thing to be aware of is it doesn't necessarily show you the data inside the Bricks editor itself, which is a little bit frustrating. So I would love to be able to see that data being pulled in. One thing you can do with any of this kind of data is make sure that you come into your manage, into your template settings, under your populate content, make sure you include something that has the data. In this example, the Abergavenny Food Festival is the one that we're using that we've added some repeater regions to. So we'll hit the apply preview, that will reload. If we scroll down, you can see it still doesn't show it up, but we don't get the placeholder anymore. A little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. Okay, so let's start mapping the data. So first of all, let's start with our heading. So inside here, like we always do, we choose the dynamic data, there's ACPT. We can scroll on through until we find that repeated data. There's the event info name, we we'll choose that from the list. You can see it pulls the placeholder in. The date, do the same thing again. So we're gonna choose our little lightning bolt. Just type in date, for example, and you can see that'll filter things out. So it makes our life a little easier. So there's our mini events, repeat the date, the time. So we'll do the same thing again. Click time, choose it from our list. The price, going to come in currency, the things all set. So value, all we're going to do is come inside here, select, type in price. There's our price field. And finally, we've got our button. We're going to select that from our list, remove this little placeholder, hit the dynamic, type in URL, and at the bottom there's our repeater, choose that from our list. So we'll now hit save on here, and let's preview this page. And there we go, there are our two mini events all shown up. You see there's the details, title, the date, the time, the price, and the book event, which will allow us to go off to whatever link that we want it to go to. So that's how you use repeater regions in ACPT. They're very powerful, super useful. And once you start using them, you'll find lots of different use cases to add them in to when you're building websites. But as always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.